uh we are recording uh oh my god what is up buds welcome to the first inaugural episode of the ear buds podcast live stream we're here we're queer and we're in top gear uh okay we <laughs> sounds like too many people well i mean i don't know about you man I, I don't really know you if i'm being honest that's true what after four years of of uh close close friendship very intimate <laughs> well that's mm-hmm. the thing is that it's been so intimate and so close that it's made me question kind of like what things you're into you know the validity of, of the, of the my... validity of, yeah i i i yeah. You, you thought I didn't see you staring at me with those eyes of yours, but I saw. I My saw. You little eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Behind those yeah, well, little I mean, glasses. Our friendship has been mostly physical. Yeah. Um, I would say so. We've, we've gotten to know each other in, in a biblical sense, mm-hmm. I would say. We, we go to Sunday, um, uh, we read passages from the Bible and meet to talk about them every Sunday. Yeah, while we bone yeah it's pretty that's the best way i could put it (laughs) it's pretty sexy um i didn't think this was the energy we'd be starting this off with but that's fine hey man you you're the one that did that you started the whole i'll take the blame for that uh i'm just nervous because this is our first little stream and this is our first little thing oh hey uh andres is here yeah Andres is here. He is watching. Hey, man. Thanks for joining, bud. Uh, so, Thanks uh, for joining. Just a little quick quick uh, summary of what this thing is. We're going to get together every Friday, and we're either going to talk about a new album coming out on that Friday. So we're talking about this album today when it comes out. Or, uh, you know, some miscellaneous thing. We're, we're thinking uh, Lucas had this show. Where he was going to talk about uh, weed and weed news, strains, uh, questions, comments, answers. Yeah, I was going to have Brett on as the non-weed user um, to provide his boring uh, perspective. Thank you. So that could be fun. But mostly what this is for is we just like we have such a backlog of albums that we want to talk about on the podcast that comes out once a week that because it comes out once a week and we record them several weeks in advance, there's no way we're going to be able to put, you know, listen to and review a brand new record in a timely fashion. If we had decided to do turnstile for our next episode, that episode wouldn't come out for like three weeks or something. So the whole point of the stream is to every Friday, have people join us and do a live listening party essentially. And we kind of do a short review. We pause in between songs to talk about what we thought. And we kind of like listen to the whole record together we answer y'all's chats uh, and you know, we we're going to put this out as different pieces of content outside of the live stream. So if you don't catch this, you'll, you know, you can listen to it on YouTube, like hear our reactions on YouTube. You can uh, hear our little mini review as a mini podcast episode that we'll be releasing like within a day or two after doing the live stream. So this is our first chance or our first try, like, let's do it. I cannot fucking wait to listen to this record. I've been holding off all day. Uh, I love Turnstile. I've been really psyched for this new album. I've heard a couple of singles that they've released, and I I need to uh, I need to I need to listen to this, Brett. Yeah, I actually found them on my Discover Mix a long time ago. On it was a song called like New Shade of Blue or something, or like New Blue, and it's a song that sounds absolutely nothing uh, like any of their other stuff. And so it was a nice little introduction to them. We listened to a couple of songs just a little bit, just to test out the stream. And I'm, I'm excited to listen to this thing, man. I'm so uh, excited, man. They, I heard these guys in a fucking uh, commercial on Instagram, like when I was scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> they, they, I guess they were advertising this new record uh, or their new single or something like that. I think it's called TLC. And, uh, oh, I loved it so much. The bassist impressed me with all his, like, wild he's a, movements. He's, and he's a crowd killer. Yeah, I, you use that term, and I love that term. Um, 
Yeah, and I listened to uh, one of their earlier records a couple weeks ago, just driving around, um, and really, really loved it. Cool combination of like hardcore punk and bringing in a little bit of uh, pop punk, I would say, into the mix. So, yeah, this is their new record. It's called Glow On. Uh, man, I'm ready to dive into it when you, yeah. you are. Yeah, we're go- we're gonna make some mistakes, but we're gonna learn together. We're gonna grow together, y'all. Uh, this this the look of this record. Uh, there might be something different on this one that we haven't heard from Turnstile yet. But let's just get into the dang thing and see. Ooh, one of those seamless transition songs. Yep. Uh, so immediately, I'm loving what's happening here. Uh, Dude. It seems like it's not it's not that hardcore, right? Not not that hardcore yet. I mean, it's kind of it's pretty hardcore, dude. Their riffs are going hard. Uh, their guitars fill the room. Uh, I I'm loving the effects the on the vocals. Me... Yeah, dude, I love his voice so much. Andres uh, said echo is... effect slaps, and he is absolutely right. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. Um, yeah, his vocals are awesome. It, it almost sounds like, uh, compared to the last record I heard by them, it almost sounds like he's got his voice has gotten better. Yeah, he's doing a lot more actually I, singing. I'm now. loving his voice right now, man. It's it's like it goes hard, but it has that. Uh, he still has that melody in there. And yeah, where before he was doing more of the hardcore thing, where he's like singing at the same register the whole time, he's not necessarily like singing notes. Yeah, from the stuff that I heard before. So it's it's cool that he's like. Uh, 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 like they weren't doing a lot of that in the previous i think so the previous stuff reminded me a little bit of like de la rocha uh where it was a little bit yeah for sure kind of a little screamy a little rappy um and it seems like he's still utilizing those things but with a little more melody in there Uh, yeah yeah, man, that's a great start to a record. It reminded me a lot of Violent Soho, the the guitar tone. I don't know if you've heard them. No, I haven't. Uh, um, they're they're Australian, kind of bringing back like a little bit of their Nirvana grungy sound, but mixing it in with punk. And uh, and that song Mystery sounds like it could have been a Violent Soho song, and I love those guys. So great start for me. Uh, I almost kind of, I almost wish you could listen to this album through because I feel like the transition to this next song would be pretty good from that outro. But this is what yeah, we're doing. For sure. What is going on here? What happened what to this band? Fuck? What is going what on? What was that? Oh, this Ooh. is immediately a completely different band than was on the last two records that I've listened to. Dude, they, they have like definitely evolved into... Uh... Like what the fuck was that Latin part, man? With all the little cowbells or whatever. I love that so much. That was so sick. And and the way those drums came in, it was kind of like not exactly like a hip hop thing, but it wasn't. You know what I'm talking about? It wasn't not. It wasn't (laughs) not a hip hop thing. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Wow, dude. And that breakdown. They slowed it. Ooh, oh, slowed that down. This is already nasty. This is already my favorite turnstile record. This is yeah, already my favorite too, record. Man. You know what's funny is that this sounds like the record that all of the old turnstile fans are gonna say that they sold out on this one. Because I feel like this is already the catchiest one that we've yeah. heard so far. It's catchy. It's uh I don't know, man. when I when I listen to the two records I listened to by Turnstile, I remember thinking that all the songs kind of sounded a little too similar to really discern from each other. Uh, yeah, man. But it seems like on this one, they're so good. So far, they're really making an effort to kind of separate some songs. Now, uh, of course, I think there are 16 songs on this record. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll see that, how long that, was, that continues. That surprised me a little bit. There's 15 songs, it's, but it's only 34, it's 35 minutes essentially. So there's probably at least four or five songs on here that are less than two minutes. Uh, okay, so um, the song that we just heard was called Blackout. Blackout. That was, it was awesome. Had um, a music video. Loved it. Yeah, I was wondering if that was an official video. Uh, Andres said that song went in like three different directions and I didn't hate it. And I completely agree. Right? 
this <laughs> is they're like the the blend the the all of a sudden bringing in that latin flavor and i love the little synth that they're using throughout the last few songs too like this is this is awesome man i am yeah so not disappointed with this record dude okay what the fuck, what the fuck <laughs> am i listening to i it starts off with a punk beat like the most punk beat you can think of and then it goes into a uh what's that latin groove uh like almost like almost like reggaeton type dude you ever listen to something so good that it makes you move <laughs> it's, that, that's what's that's what's happening to me right now man i'm almost i'm almost sad that we're not doing this album for a regular episode like yeah. this so far we're only on track four of 16 right uh yeah. but like so far this is kind of becoming one of my albums of the year Damn, dude. i mean look if it's gonna keep doing stuff like this the whole time it's in tiny little chunks they know not to overstay their welcome on on any yeah. of these things uh which can which is almost like uh can be your detriment like if if your song goes like andres was saying like in three different directions in two and a half minutes like sometimes that's too much but they are giving you the amount that you want and then switch it up on you it's like yeah i haven't been able to i haven't been able to you know how you can somehow sometimes like you listen to enough music you can predict what they're about to do i haven't been able to do that yeah <laughs> and i i'm loving it man i i'm, I'm loving it yeah. i i have no idea what to expect anymore i'm just throwing my expectations out the window I honestly, I honestly, I didn't think I'd like this record this much, but uh, let's, let's move on. Oh, is that just, <laughs> can help you that's just how it ends, shit. I guess. Smart, uh oh, kind. uh oh, all right, chill out. Oh God. <laughs> Sorry, the ads are going crazy Man. on here. Uh, I love how they aren't. They're they're just they're just not sticking to the title of hardcore. Honestly, it seems like they're just kind of doing whatever they want to do. Yeah, like that, this is a uh, not what I expected. It's a nice cruising song, as as Andres said. It it's kind of it was kind of bedroom pop. Um, but that became chuggy. It got chuggy. Chuggy rock. It it really seems like they're not limiting themselves to to any genre with this album. They're they're still got the hardcore attitude, uh, but I don't yeah. know, man. I'm I'm loving let's, it. Let's just keep it going. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, let's just keep this going. Man, those shut the fuck up. Love these riffs. Love these time changes. Not exactly time changes, but like half time and then regular time. It's it, God, man. And it's a holiday. And the, with the claps on the Dude. on the off beats of that yeah, of that, that riff, is cool. that is cool. The that's not up. that's not something I would have expected, but it works so well. Uh, that's oh, man. that's a fantastic song. I mean, let's let's just keep it going, man. Let's let, just what, keep it going. You got that's something calm. to say? Uh, no, no, I just, uh, I'm looking into, they, they have a, for every member of the band, they have a, a playlist on Spotify that, 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 that band member created mm. and man, you, you look into some of this stuff and you hear like that. I think they're finally feeling comfortable, um, going outside of the hardcore punk box a little bit, because you, you look at some of the stuff, like the bassist, he, his is earth, wind and fire, Montel Jordan, Frank Ocean and post malone and, oh, Will man. Lane and so you know you got that but then you have like lauren hill and prince on some of the other playlists and everything so i'm, I'm starting to hear um i'm starting to hear their influences here a little bit more and it's really really fun to check this out so yeah man i i was ready to oh, pass man. that off as like maybe a little bit of a filler song just a regular kind of hardcore thing but they switched it up and and even if yeah. they didn't switch it up, they had that weird kind of synthy part. Like they're adding something interesting to every single song. Yeah, I love that they're like they're doing all this different stuff, and they go, "But don't forget, we're hardcore." But we are hardcore. 
like we are hardcore. We're gonna bust out these riffs, riffs on you. Yeah, that sounded like classic like New York hardcore riffs. That sounds like Backtrack and like Bent Life and all these other bands that I'm like getting really into these days. Loved it. Andre says they have no right coming in with those transitions like that. Yeah, you're right. Totally agree. <laughs> That's what I mean, man. It's getting to the point where I'm almost getting upset. <laughs> This is too good. Next track, man. What do we got? Next track. We got uh, a track called Endless. It's a, a minute and 58 seconds. So I don't know. We've been tricked already before at how, you know, the shorter songs we think they're going to be the fucking hardcore bangers and they've been tricking us. So we'll see what <laughs> happens with this one. <laughs> Dude, Boom. I that Latin thing, man. God, man, I love the Latin influence on this album. It, it, I don't recall them ever doing anything like this in their last projects. I could no. be wrong, but I'll have to go back, man, because honestly, I only listened to that Time and Space record like once, but I loved it so much. This, this sounds way off the wall compared to that album. Yeah, I love the, I love the the melody of the like whatever he's in like. Ah, or something like that like yeah oh, i love that and uh i there were some harmonies on the last two it was like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and then like yeah 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 or whatever it's like and okay i don't know if the basis i don't know if the basis has been in the band the whole time i'm starting to feel like he has a lot of influence on this on this record that oh, sounds no. like him singing background i wouldn't know <laughs> i wouldn't know either Man, let's keep it going. I just like I I just want to keep going. Baby. Oh, baby. Super catchy again. Yeah, super they, catchy. So catchy. These songs are so catchy. Uh Stuck it out the hole you left behind. I love that tiny little I maybe not even a drum solo. But they give them a little chance to shine. You know? Uh, yeah, he's killer, man. The vocals through this whole album are fantastic. Yeah, the, he's he's really impressed me, man. It, it, it almost reminds me of, like, um, Bouncing Souls back in the day. Their singer wasn't always the best. And I still love them. But then when Bouncing Souls came out with a record called Anchors Away, it sounded like the singer had taken music or had taken singing lessons, like in between the two records. <laughs> Cause he was just hitting notes way stronger than he ever could. He was the melodies he was singing were like really high register for him. Um, and that kind of is the, like that's, it's reminding me of, of like this album's reminding me of that bouncing souls record where it's like, okay, the singer has stepped up. Yeah. It, it honestly remind me a lot of Brock Hampton's very first record, uh, American oh. Boy Band, I think it's called, uh, before their Saturation series where they got big. Uh, it's it's very spacey. There's a lot of vocals, a lot of harmonies. It's it's very uh, luscious, I'd say. Yeah, I definitely think um, that's that's cool. I I like the music a lot. I liked the the melody the. Oh, like, yeah i i dug that um but i will say that basically just sounded like a blood orange song but turnstile played it so that, that was a little strange for me i i wonder I, how much influence I, I wonder if he helped them write this song or if he gave them this song maybe and they just had him feature on it yeah yeah he might have given it to him because um Blood Orange has written for a lot of people. Um, he wrote for Solange. Um, he wrote for FKA Twigs, for Hyam, Florence and the Machine, Chemical Brothers, Aesop Rocky, Mac Miller, Blondie, Harry Styles, Mariah Carey. Like this dude has written, played, or produced for a lot of bands. So it would not surprise me if there, he was just like, hey, I got a song that I think would be great for you guys. And that was obviously him talking at the end there. Um, and, you know, I got to admit, as much as I like Blood Orange, I don't like all his stuff. And I, I don't know if I liked that song that much. I mean, honestly, I, I love to have something like that to kind of uh, give you a break from from the hardcore stuff. Yeah, break stuff. it up a little bit. You know? For sure. 
I, I, I like to have a couple breaks, even in punk albums, even if they're only like 30 or 40 minutes long. Uh, so I appreciated it. It was very uh, trippy, as Andres says. Uh, I thought it was cool. How many, you said he's uh, featuring on a couple songs, right? Yeah, so from what I saw, he was he's also on the last song on the record. Um, so we'll see what that one sounds like. But uh, he they didn't spe- specifically put that on the YouTube uh, upload, so I thought that was weird. But on Spotify, it says Blood Orange on that last album, or on that last track so we'll see what that sounds like but uh next song's called wild world and he spelled they spelled world like juice world so i don't know if it's uh homage or anything uh no. i have not listened to much juice world so if it is i will not recognize I haven't either. it <laughs> same so man these songs are not feeling like that was a, almost three minutes that felt like a minute and a half they they do feel fast. Uh, I'm I'm just loving all the percussion on the, on this record, man. I'm loving all the synth, uh, though. I don't think that song had it had synth at the beginning, and it just totally changed up. Yeah, and they brought it back during the second verse. That little like yeah yeah that, that, the synth little percussion yeah that's that's new yeah dude andres i i totally agree that riff is badass i loved that hiccup little thing that they were doing on one of the last last yeah riffs. yeah the to kind of trip you up Danny. yeah that was really cool just to, just that just such a small thing to make it like whoa like that that's something that you, you didn't expect you know yeah they keep doing that man and i that was I, awesome. I love how they utilize hand claps on this album you know they just yeah. put them in such weird and, it, and specific places and it's it might be weird to say, but I love the production of the hand claps. It's it feels, I guess it feels like it look it like they got an omnidirectional mic and they just got a bunch of people in one room all to clap at once, or something. Yeah, it sounded big on that on on a uh, wild world. That was cool. Yeah. Dude, they're what a way to end a song. Are so abrupt. They're so weird. <laughs> I uh, love it. I love Andres's comment. This is the kind of song I feel like I'd hear during a montage moment in a coming of age '90s sex romp. <laughs> he said that uh, that that odd uh, instrument that starts playing might be a theremin, which uh, yeah, that's kind of a cool. It might be. It sounded like a synthesizer to me. Um, I will say as the songs go on. Uh, I feel like I'm getting less and less impressed, but they always do something in each song to keep you interested. It's not like I'm not yeah. like still interested in the songs, but those first like five songs each had a moment that like blew my mind. Uh, yeah. and so you obviously can't like... you can't do that over sixteen songs, right? But yeah, I think it was right around Fly Again which was the eighth song on the record. That's when it started kind of falling off a little bit. Um, I was, I was curious too, if it was just me, cause I'm like a little hungover. So I didn't know if I was just getting tired <laughs> and I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm just getting bitchy and tired. Um, and that's why this, it's kind of falling a little flatter now it, or they just front loaded this record with all the goodies. Nova, would you like to say something on camera real quick? What do you think about the album so far? You know, uh, I think it's uh, real good. And uh, Meg White is not that good of a drummer. Okay. <laughs> oh, geez. Coming in with the fucking... We're going to get us kicked off Twitch, dude. <laughs> I manipulated everyone in my house to have my Meg White opinions. <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> Too much influence in that house. You're, you're gonna be the next, the next Charles Manson. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Uh, but but yeah, man, I I feel like uh, they might just be getting in their comfort zone, more of like kind of what they were doing in past albums, I guess. And like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, not as good in my opinion. Not as good of the as the past stuff. That yeah. one I liked. I liked the riff in that in that song. Um, but yeah, they're kind of, I don't know. I don't, I didn't really like dance off too much so I, far. I don't like alien love call or dance off that much. 
uh, Dance Off, I was... Or Fly Again. I was kind of excited by Dance Off, because I was hoping it'd be some weird Latin, like, dancey, hardcore thing, but uh, I was mistaken. Uh, but, yeah, I'd say that one was more filler. I wonder if they had a certain time limit they had to reach with the album, because with 16 songs, it feels like you could take out any that feel even remotely like filler, and it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I could do without uh, Dance Off, Alien Love Call, and Fly Again. Like those three songs I can kind of do without, and I feel like this would be a much stronger record so far. Aw. Aw. <laughs> that was sweet. The, uh, I mean, I got to say the guitar tones throughout this entire record. I mean, Turnstile has always had great guitar tone throughout all their records. Agreed. Uh, great through this album. I feel like we haven't talked about the bass enough. The bass in that song was great. That little doon. That's doon, great, yeah. Boom, do, boom, do, 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 boom, boom. Uh, he's been great throughout the songs. Uh, Dude, I'm starting to I'm starting to kind of look into the the guy who recorded this for them, who produced it, and he has a really crazy catalog. Uh, everything from Mastodon to Fiona Apple. To 21 Pilots, Dr. Dre, Eminem. What? Mary J. Blige. He has songwriting credits for In the Club and Just Lose It and The Real Slim Shady. <laughs> and he recorded this record. Jeez. He's a protege of Dr. Dre. Who is wow. it? What's her name? His name is Mike Elizondo. Mike Elizondo. Yeah. I'd be lying if I... Like Ry Cooter. I've never heard of him. <laughs> No, I never heard of him either. I mean, that's the thing is like these the producers are like, uh, you know, unsung heroes a little bit. And this guy is just like, like you said, man, the tones on this record, specifically the guitar and the drums really, really stand out to me. Mm. The, the bass sounds fantastic, too. And I mean, the synths, the vocals, the production on this album so is fantastic. Good. We've said it before. Top, top notch. Uh, I, lo I love the Mac DeMarco vibe. He is not in the band, Andres. Uh, but... Oh, it looks maybe like someday and he knows. Maybe Andres knows Michael Lozondo. Looks like uh, Andres to impress might be in the know. Oh boy. Uh, wow, man. Uh, I want to thank you for letting me be myself. I, I, yeah, man. Sly and the Family Stone reference. Like what? Um. I wonder if that song's on uh, one of their playlists on, on Spotify. Oh, I wonder. Uh, I'm going to poke around. I'm going to poke around. But, wow, man. Yeah, I love that chaotic beginning of that song. I loved that. Uh, the way that yeah, that, that weird, like, it, I don't think it was even arpeggiated. It was just like that synth at the beginning. It goes into that raging music uh, and then changes halfway through completely. Uh, well, not completely. It goes like halftime. Uh, a couple of things are different. That was a cool one, man. Dude, that's the one that got me into them. Like, I when I heard that, I was like, "Who are these guys? I'm like, what the hell?" Uh, they, they're winning me over again. They're winning me over, yeah. Jerry. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting upset. Lucas likes his punk rock. <laughs> Wait, Lucas likes his rock punk. That's more like it. All right, then. Uh, is that the end of the album? That's that's all I got on Spotify. Huh. And weirdly enough, that song kept coming and going. Like, I would go to a different Spotify page and come back, and that song would be missing, and then I'd have to reload the page. It was really odd. All right, well, I mean, okay, let's talk about those two songs, and then we'll talk about the album as a whole. Uh, yeah. The first one was a, a an ethereal kind of psychedelic intro. It seems more of a segue than a song in itself, seeing as it was only like what forty seconds long. Right. Uh, and then this one, it was kind of. I really, I I'm really a big fan of the punk hardcore music with the kind of soft 
reverb vocals behind it. Yeah, man. I'm I'm loving his vocals on this record a lot. But I, it was a very odd way to end the record with the having the music kind of fading, slowly fading out, fading back in, fading out. Uh with that It was uh, a weird end. It was almost like anticlimactic a little bit. Yeah, with with a kind of dream sequence type synth behind it. Uh mm-hmm. But maybe this whole thing is supposed to be like some crazy type of dream. We got these pink clouds. The first song's called Mystery, which this entire album was a mystery <laughs> all throughout. Yeah. This record kept me guessing. Man. It, it really kept me guessing. That does, you know, it sucks. The, the last two songs, I feel like it kind of ended on a whimper a little bit. Um, yeah. Not that that last song was a, wasn't a good song, but it was. It felt like more of the ones in the middle that we kind of felt like were, it was dropping off a little bit before it picked back up. I mean, if you end this record with TLC, that's. I feel like that could have. Awesome. Yeah, I I wonder, I wonder why this of all songs. You know, maybe if we read the lyrics, it would make more sense or something. But yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah. It, it definitely not an ending you would expect with this kind of band. Uh, and with that said, let's just kind of get into the album, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, th- I was, uh, I was so excited to listen to this and honestly it didn't disappoint. Like you can't expect to like every single track on it. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, I didn't expect a 10 out of 10 record, but I expected at least an eight out of 10. And I think that's what we got here. I, I mean, my first impression is definitely somewhere in the eight range like an 8.5 i'm comfortable with giving it uh just because it it keeps you on your toes i mean you you could say it was a definitely a more front-loaded album with its tricks and it's kind of like juking you out and it's interesting latin grooves which all seem to be near the front of the album but every song has at least one interesting part to it Right, that'll yeah, that'll sure. keep you interested to get through the entire album. Yeah, whether I liked the interesting part or not, it still was there. Yeah, and it it, it yeah. keeps you keeps you going through the album. Not that it's a long album; uh, it's only like thirty five minutes long. Yeah, just under thirty five minutes long. Um, yeah, man, I feel like again, like you know, listening to it the way that we were, that we were stopping after every song, probably takes a little bit away from like the overall experience right so we might want to you know in the future just sit there and listen to the whole record you know just as it plays and and then talk about it at the end you know we'll see we'll Um, see we'll see how it goes i will say man i the first five songs on the record are like bangers with like six z's yep i uh that's, I mean, my my nar nugs of this record would probably be, definitely blackout, is one of them, mm. and maybe mm. holiday, uh, but any of the any of the songs like two through six, I think, could be good contenders. The first song was good, dude, but, I mean, the the I love I love the Latin grooves that pervaded through the first half of this record uh and even yeah, on blackout on don't play on endless i think on th- all of those had like cool latin rhythms yeah and i think on 12 on track 12 or 13 i think they brought it back a little bit if i'm remembering correctly uh but god i i loved it the the again the guitar tones of the record are fantastic when they get distorted they get real full they fill all the space the drums sound fantastic through the album the bass sounds nice and rounded and thick the vocals Mm -hmm. are fantastic both the performance and the effects they put on it the reverbs the delays the phasers at times uh and uh, everything blends so well together and it's uh and i feel like everyone on the album had a moment to shine there was there was moments where it was they they isolated the bass right and they 
really did some cool effects on his bass on a couple of these songs, man. Like, yeah. Joe, it was like tripping me out. Yeah. And I can't get over that guitar tone, man. That is like, that's like my dream tone right there. I gave me tone bone like a motherfucker. <laughs> Honestly, I, like whatever set they have, whatever rig they have, I want it. <laughs> and even, even the clean guitar tone sounded fantastic. Yeah, that Mac DeMarco stuff like sounded great. Yeah. And really good. And and the, it like going be able to go back and forth from a bedroom pop Mac DeMarco sound to, to hardcore punk is really impressive. Sometimes in the same song. Yeah, sometimes within the same like section of the song. <laughs> and uh, I got to say man, my, I think my choice nugs are my an easy one is TLC. From uh, yep. like, that Holy one was shit. good. I love that song. And I and I, it, the other one was a toss up for me between uh Don't Play and um Endless. Really? I thought Endless was super catchy. Yeah. Super catchy. I love that type of yeah, yeah. melody that they did there. Yeah, they it was really catchy. It was really punky, but they also had the the Latin thing going, which I thought was really cool. And don't play, man. Don't play has a fucking killer riff, dude. Oh, I mean, and it has that weird affected vocals. What were those weird effects? I thought it was a, a female vocalist for a while there, but it does kind of sound like they just they might have just they pitched just him up. up. Yeah, yeah, they pitched him up a little bit. Yeah, I, it's it's they they I, it feels like they have played around with the production more than they have in past albums, and it was more in their minds when they were making these songs how the studio versions were going to sound uh, than maybe past projects. Right. Man, so. pulling out that kind of reggaeton-ish uh, rhythm on Don't Play with that yeah. like that is fucking awesome and original and kind of reminds me of some of the later stuff that we were doing in Mortalis before um, the world ended. So like I love that I'm hearing rock bands incorporate more Latin stuff into their music. This yeah. is not the first band that I've listened to in the last couple of weeks that are starting to incorporate that to get to get to get to get to type of stuff. And I really love it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm extremely excited to see that more in the forefront of, of rock music. I, Cause I think it's, it's a beautiful combination from, even just the things that we experimented with, I was excited for what was going to happen and to see bands with actual uh, studios backing them in production is even more exciting. Uh, Andres says he's thinking an 8.666 out of 10 for this album. Uh, he says his first few songs are gangbusters. They went too hard. Uh, and there's probably a weird backstory to why uh, they formed the album the way they did, which. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear more about it. You know, I think uh, the the more that this album is out and in the world, we're going to see more reviews of it. And, uh, you know, so far it's holding on to a 93 out of 100 on Metacritic. Wow. That, that's... Which, which they consider universal acclaim based on 10 different reviews right now. Sheesh. Oh, I mean, it's a great record. What can I say? I think they could have taken three songs out i think they could have just agreed they're like three songs out but that's i mean it, it could be nitpicking at that point because all the song no song is like over four minutes you know so even if you don't like the track or if it's sure. filler it's going to be over in two minutes and then you're going to get to the next one and it's probably going to blow your mind right yeah i would i would say my least favorite was the one featuring blood orange unfortunately and that's one i was really excited to hear despite the music is really great on that i just didn't it felt very out of place alien love call felt extremely it did not belong on this record unfortunately that's why i loved that it was there personally okay so so you liked it because it was so out of place yeah because they they have a lot of stuff that i mean it felt like it belonged on the record even though it's something that shouldn't belong on a hardcore record. I think there's a lot of things that should not belong on this record that work. That right. So that's just one that did not work for me. 
yeah it didn't work for me i could go i could do without alien love call and i could do without dance off and maybe even no surprise even though no surprise is just so short anyway but take those three tracks off and i think every song is really strong oh yeah for sure uh uh god damn dude kerrang gave this a five out of five uh NME gave it five out of five. Paste gave it eight point four. Pitchfork gave it eight point four. People are loving this fucking album. Ay ay ay. <laughs> I mean, I'm loving this album. I'm I'm definitely adding this to my library to to listen to later. And I don't know, man. We might come back with this one sometime. We might just talk about this one on the on the podcast, though. I don't know. I feel like we hit on all the points. I feel like we'd just be repeating ourselves if we if we did yeah. it again. But I'm definitely this is just going to be on my personal playlist. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a solid seven or eight songs from this album that are going to end up on my constant rotation for the next month. For sure. Uh, Andres had a had a point here. He kind of agrees with us a little bit. He said the biggest downside for him was honestly how the album ended, and I I agree with that. I think ending it on that with that weird 45 second kind of ethereal like you said all electronic very affected voice thing i thought was a little odd and then the last track just didn't hit as hard as i would want it to i um, i almost wonder if they mixed up the tracks because i thought after that ethereal like intro they would have for sure gotten into some grimy gritty punky hardcore riff to offset that yeah. and make for an explosive climactic ending but they did not they, they did not the music th- was hardcore and the vocals were soft and then the ending was about as anticlimactic as they could have made it yeah the fading in and out to where they didn't even really give it an ending yeah. i thought was a weird choice and dude i would be totally fine with no surprise that 45 second song still being on the record if the one right after it was tlc if yeah. that if this if the right. album ended with fucking TLC a little TLC a little TLC like that is such that would be such a strong awesome end to the album like it would it would bookend it a lot better where it starts out really strong and it ends really strong right. but that's not what they did and it was obviously an artistic decision that you know hopefully as this album lives for a little bit longer I'll be able to get get a more a deeper understanding of why they did it that way because I want to know. Yeah, I yeah, I I feel the same way. Uh, so Man, well, with that, I was, mean, this was awesome. This was such a great record to start these live streams on. Man. I, was I was just thinking that, man. I was thinking, thank God, this is a record that we both genuinely enjoyed. Yeah, I agreed. Um, you know, the the who knows, like what records we're going to be doing moving forward. They they might not always be ones that we're necessarily excited to hear about. They might just be records that we're interested to hear. So we'll see what happens in the future. But uh, man, my my uh, my rating for this is uh, I think you know I don't know if you just fucking incepted an idea in my head, but eight point six six six, man. I think that is a perfect rating. 8.666. I'm, I mean, well, fine. Then I'll give it an 8.665. Because I feel like you enjoyed it a little more, just that 0.001 more than me. And I don't, I don't want to come off right. copying you anyway. So You're probably right. Um, and I think it would be a, a way more solid nine if not above a nine if it wasn't for those two or three tracks that i just kind of fell flat for me right uh but wow man what an unexpected i had i had no idea i would love this album as much as i did honestly uh my opinion of turnstile was that they were a good hardcore band and nothing was really unique about them like nothing really pulled me to listen to them again uh but i'm I'm a fan now. I, I'm I'm a fan. I'm gonna be looking forward to whatever they put out next. If if they're playing live, I will go see them and I will be in the back of the audience so that I don't get mauled. 
I'm too old to get in the pit. I've I've been too old for the pit since I was 15. So I'm I'll be in the back of the room with you. <laughs> uh, uh, but with man, that, this is man. I was just gonna say real quick. Uh, I was a I was a pretty big fan of Turnstile just based off of what I'd heard before we went into this, and I'm a I'm a even bigger fan now. I think uh, I think they're gonna do some really cool stuff in the future. If this is any indication on how much they're willing to kind of think outside the box for hardcore punk music. I can't wait to hear what else they do. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, and with that, thank you all for, for watching. Uh, thank you all for listening Thanks, on the podcast. Andres. Thank you, Andres, for being here for the entirety of the stream uh, and commenting through the entire thing. You made us feel like we're real rock stars. <laughs> uh, I felt like a member of Turnstile listening to this. You can check out this stream on Earbuds Podcast, all one word, no capitalizations, on Twitch. Uh, it'll be on our YouTube, Earbuds Podcast on YouTube, Earbuds yep. on YouTube. Yep, Earbuds Podcast on YouTube. Um, you'll, you know, you, if you guys are listening to this on, on a podcast app, like this is going to be what you're going to have access to outside of the live stream in the YouTube is going to be these, you know, this quick 10, 15 minute review that we, that we talk at the end. So um keep an eye out for these shorties man we're going to be trying to do these uh once a week as long as there's a record that we give a shit to listen to yep and if not we'll just shoot the shit i guess exactly (laughs) and just smoke weed and talk weed uh that's how we'll fill our time when there's not a good album out that week we'll just get high or i'll get high i don't know about brett um thanks so much for joining buddies andres thank you for joining we really hope you guys join us uh, in the future for these live streams. Let us know what you think too. If there's anything with the, the format that you think we could be doing a little bit better, um, these will obviously evolve and hopefully get better as we go. But uh, yeah, Brett, Lucas, this is this was good. <laughs> Bye, buddies. Bye, buddies. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.